Good morning, guys. A lot of you, uh, it's still pretty early on the West Coast time, but uh, we're gonna start the live stream with Felipe. Um, before he comes in, he joins us, I just wanna give you guys a little bit of uh, background on Felipe. So he is a big time aqua skater. He's very big in Europe, uh, all over the world, frankly, and uh, I'm really excited to have him on today and just chat about aquascaping, chat about aquarium, and chat about the hobby and how be he became a professional and everything. So, uh, all right, there we go. He's here and let's get him on right now. All right. Hey, man. Hey, Felipe. How are you? A little bit early for you, right? Yes, uh, it's a bit <laughs> early for me, but it's okay. I'm used to it. Uh, for me, it's still okay. It's afternoon after lunch, so I am uh, already wake up. So for you, yeah. it could be uh, a little bit tough. 7 a.m. So this is the okay. challenge of doing live streams from two different places, very far away from. So how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, sir? Yeah, I, I'm doing good. Not totally great. I got um, the Janssen vaccine uh, a few days ago. I still mm. have a few symptoms, but nothing. I should complain too much about it, but I'm doing well. So mostly now that the weather is getting better, close to some summer holidays, that is good too. And, uh, of course, um, waiting that everything gets back to normal very, very soon so I can start traveling once again. Uh, at yeah, least oh, man, country. I miss traveling. I started doing it uh, last June. So mm -hmm. it's a bit weird when we get to the airport. Uh, it's like waking up from a zombie apocalypse. So there's <laughs> nobody sure. there since... Uh, Man, it's so weird. Mostly in those busy airports where there is a lot of people around, and then suddenly you see just a few people there. And yeah. uh, I must say that is a little bit scary because uh, <laughs> it's so weird, to be honest. All the things are in the U.S. Uh, things are, I, I, I want to say, a little bit better than before. But then, obviously, you know, with the Delta... And yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's not. I mean, like we're we're still a long way from, you know, being able to uh, be completely open. So, mm -hmm. but things are, are are better. Things are better. But uh, for sure. this will work in different states. Uh, if I don't, um, if I'm not wrong, they work different in uh, different states. Because I remember yeah. to talk with my friend. Uh, Mike and he said that on the streets they there is no mask they are just living the normal life no restrictions yeah, at yeah. All. yeah oh yeah different states have different ways of doing things yeah this, it's, it's a, a whole thing yeah big country <laughs> oh. yeah hey so we met we first met in uh, I remember in China we met in China right it was uh, 2018. Yeah. Sit. Oh, uh, I cannot be precise. I, I will ago. ask you that because uh, I, I had an idea that uh, we already had met that at SIPS, uh, I think, or SIPS or Aquadam, I think it was SIPS. SIPS, uh, yeah, in 2018. And um, you were talking about the things uh, about aquascaping in the U.S., if uh, I was willing to travel, when we can do something. But can we imagine from all the countries that I already have visited and um, I never been in the United States? Really? So, yes. I am so close in Monterey, Mexico. Uh -huh. If I'm not wrong, it's one hour flight uh, from Monterey to Houston, Texas. Oh, wow. So um, on that time, I was going to visit Mike there and mm. probably even do some event over there, but then we need visa, we need a lot of uh, bureaucracy all around, so uh, I end up just to stay and come back. Maybe one day we can just manage something, just to do something over there. Definitely, I, I look forward to seeing you here and showing you around. Now that will be great. But tell yeah. me, Mark, do, do you do this for a living or not? I, I do this for a living now. 
Yeah. yeah. When I met you, when 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 mm-hmm. I met you in Sips, uh, it was still I was still trying my way, trying to find my way into the mm-hmm. uh, into the industry, but uh, uh, I I started the company in early 2019. Oh, cool. Well, yeah. So no, pretty, I remember shortly we, after the Sips. I remember yeah. we talked about something you were um, kind of. Um, Having an organization or a group or something related with a kind of foundation or something, mm-hmm. if I'm, my memory is still good. <laughs> so I think you remember to talk about something in Los Angeles, um, something like that, about you have kind of a group or um, what we call not even a forum, but a kind of a group all around the town that we are just getting more people involved. Uh, do you remember that? I am wrong about that or not? Uh, I'm, uh, my memory is a little vague <laughs> about that, yeah. But I remember, I, remember uh, I met you and then I met Oliver. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I met Heiko all on the same, same at the same yeah, event. Round, yes. It, it, was a, it was a great show. I mean, uh, to it see was everybody. In China? No, I, I'm from China. So yeah, I know, but uh, yeah. Yeah, Sips. Oh, I Sips, yeah. That was my sip, uh, first Sips event. No, and then I, before I, that, I went to Akurama uh, mm-hmm. a little bit earlier than that. But then Akurama is just not as great. Uh, it's different. Uh, I think it's Akurama very, very is different. more um, fish industry and Sips is more in the, all global, all the things around. And uh, you know how they do the things. If they want to do big, they do big. Just. Yeah. And Sips is... Uh, uh, I didn't, uh, at the time, just to go for a round and see everything. It's everything so huge. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been in, uh, in Germany for um, Interzoo or not? Interzoo. Well, I, I, haven't, I haven't been to Interzoo yet. So the most close we have uh, from SIPS is Interzoo in Europe. Mm. And I must say that also huge. Um, sure. And last year was postponed with COVID. Uh, they wanted to do uh, this year. So it was postponed because it only happens every two years. Mm. And they, um, I think next year um, it will be okay. And also it's, it's a huge uh, trade show. Yeah, and yeah. you can find all manufacturers over there. And um, SIPs you, are kind of similar size. Sure, or... sure. Were you at the uh, were, were you at SIPs for for being a judge on the contest or for Aquaflora? No, you know that um, uh, I am there for just for a judge. Um, somehow we make part of the organization of uh, CLIAC that is China um, aquascaping. Mm-hmm. And um, then uh, every year we were invited just to be there uh, with all expenses paid. Uh, on the beginning, um, I think they, um, yeah, on the beginning we did a few uh, shows live for the audience and also for the aquascapers. Then later on, since they were bringing more and more people around, um, we start just um, having that uh, live event. The all aquascapers they uh, were the best uh, score for each country uh, in the top 100, or top 50. They were invited. They would scape live. So with that way, they can manage more or less two days event. So we don't need it to do anything else. Just advise, be there. Um, in the end, just to judge. And uh, that is it. It's one way just to go to China. Uh, I really love China, uh, to be honest. Uh, not so comfortable with the weather in the, um, Guangzhou, but more comfortable in Shanghai. Uh, because yeah. I'm from Portugal here, I would say it's not that hot. Uh, when we get to Guangzhou, sometimes it's 40 plus. And uh, if the sky is not clean, then we cannot breathe. It's right. just for me. I, I would love to visit Portugal. I mean, uh, just, you should like, come. Yeah. Well, you're and, there, uh, and then there's the Oceanarium. And, and, yes, Oceanarium. Lisbon Oceanarium. You need to come 
while the um, the big tank is still uh, in visible. Mission, yes. Yeah, because it you know originally um, that was supposed to stay two years. Then yeah, I know, I know about that. Yeah, about three four years, and then they always said that that will not be permanent. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. they said that um, they will keep it until it was uh, paying the expenses of the exhibition at sure. least so so don't have any is, uh, it, is it true that they have uh two permanent staff from ada there all the time not to any maintain, the, maintain the tank and not anymore they had it not uh, anymore. okay they have it uh, they had it on the first three years i think mm. four years yeah, I think it was three years. Um, however, the the staff of Lisbon Oceanar they um, they were in Japan uh, even before the project started, mm -hmm. just to learn uh, all uh, the things around. So, gotcha. The the same staff that is taking care of the temporary exhibition is the same staff is taking care of uh, the maintenance mm -hmm. of uh, gotcha. the big rafts and the big uh, I would say aquarium oceans. Sure. They still have in the in place. So yeah, yeah. they have kind of an internal lab uh, just to breed the species because they have protected species mm. in the, the, the Oceanarium. So they, they are very qualified people. So oh, the I, only I thing that should be missing is the technique for trimming or aesthetical view just to keep it in on shape. But um, mm. I think after three years, come on, even if yeah, you are yeah. all around and see how they do so many yeah. things you learn how to do it okay? exactly and so, you worked on it right you worked on yeah. it uh with the uh, takashi amano yes I, I was there in the project not uh, not invited by amano or from uh -huh. european acoustics this i think is the german distributor for ada in uh, europe okay uh, and i was invited by or at least on a scenario because i am portuguese um, it was really an amazing project uh, for the country um, mm -hmm. being, I think, the most well-known guy in Portugal uh, regarding aquascaping would be a really a nice opportunity to be there. For sure. And, um, they came to me, they talked to me a um, few months in advance. Uh, they asked me if I could um, invite somehow some people just to join, some volunteers uh, to be there in the project. And uh, in the end, I think we had 10 people from Portugal, plus people all around the Europe. They were invited by um, European aquaristics and um, some uh, uh, European ADA distributors, some from Spain, others from Germany. Uh, I think uh, is some, I, probably I'm missing someone. Uh, maybe from Denmark, some people around that came just to stay in the project. I think in total we were around 40, 50 people there working. Wow. Of course, not everybody inside of the tank. Sure, uh, sure, sure. I mean, you can't fit anybody. Around. In the first, I think in the first and second day, I was outside just carrying rocks uh, mm -hmm. without knowing that I was working with um, Amanu's wife and daughter. Oh uh, uh, no, because I didn't know the family. Uh, sure, no, right, right. And we were just carrying rocks and selecting uh, the the rocks according to the to the stages because mm -hmm. you know to build a tank so big as that um, we need to have a really nice foundation, and that uh, for people that don't know it's like a swimming pool on a yeah. on a bottom. They protect it with the. Um, kind of uh, resin the scale, or uh, the scale of that project it's it's just enormous. and then they made a few holes in the concrete mm -hmm. just to where the soil and uh, the all the plants were placed and on the sides big cliff of uh, lava stones and then covered with the soil and then kokedama uh, plants or mm -hmm. we call kokedama is like a bonsai no sorry okay. it's like a um, like a small uh, wabikuza with the plants on it. So in that for a special reason, because if you were covering the sides completely with um, with rocks, um, mm -hmm. 
flooding it, uh, that would be a big chance of the soil slide down. Right, uh, right. Rocks, and uh, that will cause a big, big issue. And that happened in the, the both sides. So we had mm. to drain a little bit more the water, refill some of the spots. Because in that, we only use um, the tweezers probably a few times because mm. everything was prepared in some kokedamas and then um, some plants were covered in coconut um, skin or some, not skin, is the, the, the part, shell, inner yeah. part, not inner part of the, the like a mesh. Oh, okay. So, so to keep a little bit the moist and that, in that way, since there is so many people um, planting in, you know, on such tank, we need to mm. be sure that more or, or less the same plants were the same distance between them Otherwise, if you're going to use tweezers, uh, you start in one side. When you get to one third of a tank, there is no more plants. So <laughs> you know, everything yeah. needs to be split somehow. So they had kind of match. They put the plant inside. So you put it there. It's also a way that when the soil is compact that much, uh, will not struggle the roots of the plants. So you keep mm. it for long. Um, it was, uh, I must say, it was an uh, experience of a lifetime. Oh, yeah, and for sure. I already work in uh, big tanks, uh, but nothing compared to that. Uh, working inside of a tank like you did with your discus tank is something that oh, thanks. <laughs> used to do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, but that one, being your barefoot for 8 a.m. in the morning till 6, 7 wow. in the afternoon or evening, then you can you want to walk to the hotel even a small grain of sand in your shoes can feel like they are drilling holes so <laughs> it's, it's it's a little bit painful uh all the fort uh paid off and mostly for me it was a big big challenge because i got mm. the back surgery six months ago or something like that mm. can imagine um, a big fort just to make all of that after a back surgery, Ooh. things could end really wrong. So yeah. I, I got back surgery in August, September, and then in February we were um, doing it. So I was still recovering. And some parts of the platform outside, you see, is uh, like this is the, the kind of um, the top of the tank, where mm -hmm. people just to see from the top. Then you yeah. have the tank, and then you have the acrylic. So we were here with uh, mm -hmm. our belly down, like you were pushing up and putting the plant, someone holding your legs, and this is mm -hmm. how we wow. the, the sides of the tank. I must say that for back recovery <laughs> was killing us. <laughs> but you, like, when you planted the, ta uh, the tank, you couldn't get into the tank physically or... Like, uh, only in the, I think if I, the, my measures or my memory is still okay, that has nine meters by 11 by nine or nine, 12, nine, something like that. In, Consider yeah. the front. Mm -hmm. I am talking meters, not centimeters, okay? Right, right. And then I think it's 120 high. And then you have three meters, uh, I think it's three meters 20 depth. So, the part where is the sand, you were inside. Mm. But then when everything was planted inside, it was time to plant outside. So you mm. can always use paper towel or plastic just to cover the moss, bobiris, microsorums, everything mm. that all um, epiphyte plants that were placed on the wood. But then we, you, if you, or the holes on the, on the bottom, you should plant inside. Yes, but okay. all the sides yeah. and the higher parts that comes to give you the depth that goes towards the top of the tank, that you must do it outside. So, sure, sure. So you were preparing, and to reach the other part, someone had to hold or sit down on your legs, and then yeah, you were yeah. just bending, and then go with your hands on the back and get another one and put it like that. I were exchanging wow. uh, maybe every 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I don't sure. know. Everybody can... <laughs> Can last because um, in that way it was was tough, but uh, it's like going to the gym, but um, <laughs> twelve hours a day, or That's building a house. That was it was crazy. Uh, it, I don't know how many 
tones of rocks and sand mm. there was because uh, I, I think i talk about these things so many times guys and um and i think we don't have that idea or realize how big it is until mm-hmm. we get there exactly and anytime i'm going there i have shield so mm. because the atmosphere the environment is all dark and you only see the tank when i mean dark is not the music dark. so you have some humidity even going down on your neck as uh, some mm. kind of and the music and everything is, is yeah uh, that's i mean like i definitely want to visit it before you know uh mount it uh, hopefully it won't it won't close any time soon yeah i think uh yeah at, at this moment i cannot even say when because first i don't know uh second if we are just following uh, what they um have told us it was for 2 years 3 right. years max and then we would see uh, because no matter uh, what they built they probably already start thinking what they will going to do mm-hmm. and uh, this is amazing for us and also it's not just for us everybody that is involved in fish keeping however mm-hmm. fish keeping people I was tend to misunderstand the concept of why that tank was built. So mm. they would like to have some some bass inside some big fish they don't understand that is live plants and um I think probably they think that is plastic and you can put whatever you want so you can only see small fish and some altums and just that and is a waste of time getting there just to see uh probably they don't know but probably 2000 fish are swimming in that tank mm-hmm. so but since they are small and uh, they don't see fish they they want to see fish but to see fish you can just get out from that temporary room you go to the permanent exhibition you have plenty of fish there the concept yeah, of funny cuz uh <laughs> so here's what i I'm very different from uh most aquascapers. So I I at first of all I don't call myself an aquascaper because I'm not like uh um I'm not trained as an aquascaper, right? No, like I'm not you trained you are like aquascaper. So if you yes, are I am, but hey, not the somehow, you know the using artscape or plants just a small amount but in a different concept like um Mike or ADG uh, artscape style no plants at all. I think that is very common on uh, United States, right? So you are still uh, yeah, sure. It's more, still... more so, oh. more so, more common than I guess in Europe. But uh I I think uh a lot of times when the when the term aquascape is used nowadays more more so than um more so more so than not we're referring to plant tanks most of the time right and then uh, i'll say with most w- yeah with plant tanks um there are actually a lot of large species that can that can really work pretty well so for example uh you know there's uh peacock bass that will not yeah. touch the plants at all and then there's a uh, the different concept mark so yeah. that was built to be in balance to be peaceful and of course you have um, you only see the big part and probably having all the small stem plants all the delicate parts they have on the sides probably with big fish that will be a disaster so it will be a uh, very difficult to keep it balanced and for so many years they cannot dig the soil mm. they can mess around with the plants and of course from that will be have probably some limitations on that and um the idea there is just to bring a tropic a tropical what say or river not going for the biotop but having a natural aquarium when you can just sit relax don't having big predators but small fish that you bring it either to upper scale i think that is the reason and um you even if you use only artscape on your tanks you are still doing aquascaping because you are playing with artscape of course people always associate uh, having a lot of plants because of takashima 
because sure, Amano sure. into the aquarium, we still have to have plants just to call it an aquascape. But not really, because you can have an aquascape just with rocks and wood and just fish and still beautiful too. Of course, exactly. to keep the balance between the fish waste, the fish food, of course, the plants will help with the chemical filtration. So all ammonia, nitrogen, phosphorus will be assimilated by the plants. I will keep it a better balance like we have in natural swimming pools. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but this is an option. So people can have plants or not. It's their decision. Right, right. So I think United States is um, so big that uh, even for some reason, I go for at uh, the nursery, not in Netherlands, but in the United States, and mm. probably they were run out of plants very, very fast. So it's yeah, a huge yeah. country. Um, the hobby is actually uh, growing a lot in the in the U.S. Uh, I mean, like, in terms of the popularity, it's still behind uh, Asia and it's still behind Europe. Mm -hmm. But then I've seen a lot of growth in terms of uh, just the dedication the hobby. and the demand Yeah, in the hobby, in the planted side. I think even with yeah. this thing of uh, the pandemic, somehow the hobby grew up really, really fast. I don't know. Uh, I am a little bit afraid of what will happen if all the restrictions are over. Uh, and also people can still living free with no restrictions at all. Um, I think most, probably 50% will give up the hobby again. Uh, I have seen so many shops here in Portugal because we have so many shops for square meter. I would say mm -hmm. probably just here around in 30 kilometers diameter, we have six shops, fish mm -hmm. shops, not pet wow. shops. Okay. So we have a lot. Uh, the hobby here is big. We have a lot of shops and I am um, not even in the, in the capital. I am on Porto. Um, and probably here, only fish shops. The few that I know, around seven, eight, then there is normal fish shop, it's, uh, pet shops, and this is just the north, and you have the south, or center, that is Lisbon, the capital, and the surroundings, like Coimbra, Braga. There's still a lot of, a lot of shops, and most of the well-known European um, um, aquarium manufacturers, they are also from, from here, or they are based here, uh, like um, Aqua Atlantis, Casco, who have also now coming now, ILA. Um, there is, um, uh, which is the brand? Another one that is also based. They are similar, all the north of Portugal. So they are uh, serving mostly Europe and some brands also Asia. But um, I think that the, the big difference we have here is Europe. Uh, the square meter is so expensive that the house mm. are small. So you have you can just put one nano or one tank of ninety or one twenty, and it's still already big. Uh, I think United States you can have two, three, four meters. It's still okay in a house. The houses are big. At least yep. if you don't live in the big cities, but I believe most, they are the countryside, they are big, big houses. And of course, it's, it's funny, you see so big tanks and small fish inside. This is why they tend to like to see big fish filling the, the space. I understand the concept. I'm not against that. Uh, this is priorities and um, fish keeping or the hobby itself by having fish, planted tanks, rafts, salt water, whatever, biotopes. There is a market for everyone. So exactly. this is a niche of a market that is aquascaping. Uh, sometimes a little bit elitist in the way how people think we are. And um, they don't understand when they say that usually I don't do what I want. I do what my customers demand. <laughs> So yeah, that's more the that. same case for every designer. So out there. Yeah. if they think I love my job, don't get me wrong. I love my job. Um, I'm also a graphical designer. I am photographer. Uh, I am taking also the social media, uh, I hope for the social media. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, 
I am aquascaper. But what do we mean with aquascaper? We do some scapes in private customers. Uh, we have now a gallery. Would be nice to give you a tour in the gallery if we mm. did this live stream three weeks ago. But time there is always too short. And uh, yeah, yeah. starting the gallery in, uh, is in the Netherlands, right? Yes, in the Netherlands. Is uh, where it is the headquarters of Fargo Floor. So mm -hmm. on the beginning or a few years ago, when I started working with them, we had the tanks in the canteen spread out all, all over the place. If we find a spot, okay, then we put a tank here. <laughs> and later on, we can use those tanks uh, to do experiments with different plants, uh, taking photography, even for catalog. Yeah. And um, if the tank were good enough, we can take them with us to exhibitions. That was mm. the, the most difficult part. And sometimes- I remember seeing a tank that's just on, you guys made a stand with pallets. Yeah, it's still there in the gallery. Oh, it's still there, okay, cool. <laughs> and there is a reason to be in the pallets because um, we need to transport that tank every single year mm. to an exhibition because that tank does not belong to us. That tank, we take care of it. Uh, we maintain it every year, but we have kind of a special agreement with the um, Vivario organization. Um, so I am in charge of that tank by escaping it, maintaining it, and uh, then in close to Vivarium exhibition, uh, I need to drain all the, hard, the water, prepare everything, and then we mm. need to bring the, the tank as three meters by 75 by 75. Mm. So it's 1,600 liters. So it's big, but it's not huge. But sure. uh, to transport in a truck with a forklift is a little bit challenging. So uh, that, this is why we put them in the pallets. It's easy to transport. So just carry. I see. I see. And that one was, um, I would say, more or less the main interest of the warehouse. That was also not so good in terms of equipment because there is always a little bit of dust coming from the trucks getting in, getting uh, out. Mm -hmm. um, so the door usually is open just to uh, refresh the air. But somehow, uh, even for the equipment, even for the water itself, if you still have a little bit of dust, even of uh, the, when I mean the trucks, it's not the trucks, the fans coming and in, going inside. It's, it's, it's difficult. So that tank was moved, and this is one reason why we just built up the gallery. In the gallery, we have all those tanks, and that three meters tank is still there. But in the gallery, we have now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven tanks. Mm. Three meters to sixty centimeters. So those tanks. Um, Mainly is to feature our plants, of course, showing different styles. Time to time to invite some uh, international aquascapers. That's so, that's a beautiful that's a beautiful gallery. That is. I, I would love to. I, I would love to have a chance to go work on the the gallery sometime. In the no, that, that is an amazing. Um, the idea was just fabulous. So you can have all in one single place, then uh, I must say that if you have a meeting, if you want to create some event, I remember la uh, not this time, but last time I was there before having 15 months with no traveling, uh, we had an event, Japanese nights with the uh, Takayuki Fukada and Stephen Chong there. Mm -hmm. And um, it was two nights of events, uh, skipping to different tanks. And it was made in a gallery. That space was uh, used to also create some nice events. Also mm. teaching um, some companies that maybe will be interested uh, in know a little bit more about aquascaping so they can have mm. private classes, private teaching inside of the gallery. We have um, not a big screen, but we're projected so we can show slides, we can so show video. Um, you can stream and see automatically on the, on the, the big screen. Is, is the gallery open for public? Not to really. public? Not, Not really. really. Okay. Uh, of course, if you uh, contact Agoflora Esther, if you are surroundings, uh, if you ask gently, I think. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask politely. <laughs> invite you for a coffee and you can.
take a look inside. Esther is so nice. Yes. And um, I believe, I don't know if in the future they will intend to open doors, but I don't think. Because mm -hmm. um, this is still a private place. It's something that um, it takes so much that it's something that is so delicate there. Mm. So many glass, lily pipes, some special equipments open to public or you'll be with our eyes completely on over yeah, them yeah. or otherwise um, yeah some... you need a lot of manpower to manage that too so that's going to be uh, a little bit overwhelming oh uh felipe are you there i think we just lost him oh, hello are you there yeah, are, yeah i'm here I'm okay, sorry, you're, man. You're back. We have our cat. I don't know why. Uh, see that my tank is off. Everything oh, is okay. off. I'm just listening some alarms. That is probably a power cut. Mm. Not in not in my house. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> well, you're back. That's, that's cool. Yeah, I, it is always um, something that I forget. I is oh, uh, it's switching on the data in case something happens. Usually. The power cut, power orders uh, on the area happens probably one or twice a year. It's mm -hmm. probably, I mean, it's just probably repair some cable or something sure. and then turn it on. This is not usual. I was not expecting to have a, mm -hmm. <laughs> a power break right now. Right. So I think we found the data and we're just fine. Okay, yeah, we're, we're good. So um, I, I'm really curious about like, how did you get into the hobby and how did you get into the industry more uh, e even more oh well if you are looking to do something uh, as i usually do is taking care of tanks or skipping tanks doing uh, layouts in customers house you need to have a portfolio that is the thing nobody will hire you if you don't show them the skills i think it happens the same to you, huh? If you are running your company, if you don't show that you are yeah. capable of doing it, so I think nobody will hire. Then nobody will believe or trust in your service. So before, you need to show. before we get to that, how, how did you, uh, how how did you get into the hobby? Like, what what was your oh, uh, so much time ago coming to the hobby? So really long time ago, as probably I'm telling this story for so many years. And I always say I started 20 years ago, probably already 22, 23, 24, because I'm getting, I'm not 40 anymore. And I found that somewhere in the information about the, being judge of a contest, I still have 43. I am already 46 years old. So it means the time passed and uh, probably it's not 20 years ago, it was 25 years ago. Sure. And I just started like everybody else, so having a regular tank at home. Then I discovered um, not social media because that time there was no social media, but um, right. having some forums, people just creating some forums for acquiring hobby. And then I remember to show my tank over there, and people say it's so nasty things because bullying yeah, nowadays. Forum. Is only for pussies. So that time was tough. So yeah, that's, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. And um, somehow I told to the guy, okay, I will show you how the proper do it. And um, I start getting a little bit obsessed by all aquascaping, plants. And uh, of course, then I start um, sending my applications to some co contests. I start winning some contests. Um, I remember to be the, the first one creating the treescape, the famous bonsai treescape. Mm. I think it was 2005. I can imagine it already 16 years ago. And um, the first bonsai tree gave me the name and probably put me in a the, in the different stage. So people was using that as a reference. And then, of course, I didn't stop there because um, um, I... Get into the hobby, then I get the judge, 
later on, I was, um, I've al always been related with the uh, ET, um, the computing and uh, computer analyst and uh, networking. I was working for a um, big company in Portugal for building the subway in the north. And then uh, aquascaping was also kind of therapy just to help me to relax mm -hmm. in the normal days of stress. And um, then uh, we had a big problem here in Portugal with some bankrupt companies regarding construction, uh, some layover, and I had to do something with my life. So he had the chance of doing uh, this professionally, working for Italian brand that was already sponsored uh, on a few mm -hmm. years back. I started working for them. They suggest also to work with Aquaphora because the things will be related. Later on, I start or stop uh, working with Italian and start working just with Aquaphora. And I am um, working for Aquaphora probably nine, ten years. So, That's great. and uh, it was also a big, big challenge because for the people that know me uh, or know the style from the treescape, minimalist design, almost. Uh, Mo maximum 10 species in one tank. Mm. Uh, now I'm start using 30, 40, 45, and you look to the tank and say, well, maybe he is still using 12 different species, but no, it's a lot of them. Mm. And I start learning blending plants, blending textures, so you only notice that there is so many there when uh, you are looking closer, mm. but blending, uh, playing with textures, color, I am always one guy that try to drive in the opposite direction. Uh, I'll say uh, in aquascaping, not uh, in real life, okay? <laughs> sure. Because when everybody goes on color, I go on green. When everybody stays on green, I go on color. And um, that I, this is what I usually do with social media, is try somehow to bring more people to the hobby. I can, mm. and this is a thing. Uh, I always say that when I'm doing my workshops, I am selling the dream because I give you the teaching, I give you the inspiration, I give you the motivation you need to do something in your home. So I am selling you the dream. So uh, what are you going to do at home? It's your responsibility. So if you will need to buy stuff, you need to buy plants, and if you need someone to motivate you. It's like... Uh, you know, the motivation coach that you go into the gym and someone mm -hmm. is always saying, push harder and harder. So that workshops somehow is to show to people how easy it is. Sometimes it's not, but it looks everything so easy. So we tend always to motivate and give the hope and showing that it's possible, give them inspiration so people can simply have, or give the chance to try. And this is my part of the job right now. Mm. But tell me a little bit more about you, Mark. So usually your company is based only on service or you do planted tanks, you do everything, you do uh, um, those uh, we call uh, tank manufacturing or you just so, hire someone and you build the decoration. Yeah, we do, we, we do everything here. Actually, so from designing to build to maintenance, uh, it's like a begin, beginning to finish type of service. Mm -hmm. And then we, we have our own manufacturer, tank, tank manufacturing. So uh, we do custom builds. We do, uh, uh, you know, uh, standard builds. Like we focus on the custom builds uh, much more. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, uh, but it, you, like right now we only focus on, you know, like really large setups. So mm -hmm. but you uh, build your own tanks. Yeah. It's, it's uh, which brand it is. So it's called nature design studio. Nature design. That's our company. Yeah. Okay. And, it's, yeah. It's good because I, I was always seeing you on uh, social media where, and you were, well known by the discos, all the tank that you have behind you. So I was just so amazed with the wild discos 
with everything um, behind the project with all the player costs. But I didn't know that you had a company, that you have uh, a structure that you can do setups and build up. But tell me a little bit more about that. This is yeah. how big it is the company. How many employers do you have? Uh, right now, it's just uh, I'm the only full full time employee. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, and then I have a uh, different staff um, that's helping me with the uh, with the transport and building. Yeah, up. with the, with part time uh, bases, and then so you are running when it comes to maintenance. Um, so you kind of build and uh, transport the material to. Uh, houses to homes and then you yep. start the piping all the installation preparation it's Everything, like uh, yeah. or buying a hand a house and uh, with a key in your hand so you give all the project fish included too uh, sure yeah uh, a lot of it just depends on the clients some clients you know they, they have no clue mm -hmm. so you have to provide the fish as well and the uh, doing you know a lot of education for them as well so but they, they, of, are uh, pay, they are willing to pay to for extra maintenance or for weekly maintenance do you usually do maintenance on those tanks yeah yeah that is good yes a lot of times i mean some clients they're they're more hands-on so <clears throat> they'll just like to you know tinker with things and then want to take care of the maintenance themselves but then some of them just don't want anything to do with it. They just want the tanks to look to good enjoy. all the, the time. Good yeah, exactly. Just to enjoy. Feeding them and enjoy. Exactly. Yeah, but it's, it's very difficult. Uh, I don't know about Europe in general because um, I don't have a shop. Some people thought I had a shop, but I don't have a shop. I have my own company. i still uh, the only employee, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have uh, an exclusivity with Aquaflor. Okay, mm. but I still can escape and do some other projects if they don't go against Aquaflora. I still sure. manage my own company, but exclusively I work for Aquaflora. I am not Aquaflora employee. Okay, um, it's like uh, external company working. Yeah, because, like you're uh, subcontracted. By yeah, Aquaflora. Uh, Europe is probably not that big that United States, but. There is so many legislations and rules, mm -hmm. policies in each country that is not that easy. So you can hire someone just from Portugal to stay in Netherlands and say, oh, this is the guy that takes care of my tanks, mm -hmm. not with a mouth. So you cannot go online and say, let's clean the tank. I, I, I will be so happy just we can make it something work like that. Some mm -hmm. kind of sensor inside of a tank and say, clean the front glass. You write it down on a keyboard, on a, the phone, hmm. clean the front glass, trim the plants, trim in the shade. Now clean the lily pipes. That will be amazing. So it's difficult in that way. So I have to have my own company here in Portugal. And I sell my service to Agroflora. Um, it's the only way. Um, because policies, Europe is almost like you one single country. So hmm. we have free transit everywhere. Yeah. We don't need passport, so national document is enough just to travel. We don't have customs. But um, in terms of hiding people between countries, mm. not that uh, so easy. So we need to mm. have some kind of preparation. The home resident in that country, uh, it's not that easy. So this is why I have my own company. And um, I noticed that uh, I'm not that kind of expensive guy. But uh, if someone asks me, if uh, I escape a tank, yeah, of course I escape a tank, but you need to pay me. So it's still my hobby. I still have two tanks at home, a few terrariums. and However, I need to pay my bill, so I cannot just go do it for free. And even if I charge a small amount, for some, it's too expensive. Uh, even I do some kind of maintenance, because people look to it as a hobby, they are expecting that is free of charge. So, <laughs> no, I usually don't work that much in Portugal. And um, for that reason, because unless you have a company and you have some nice tanks there or you have a shop, you want to do a workshop, I'm willing to listen and uh, we make a, sp a special price depending on the conditions. But 
it's impossible to go to someone else's house based on maintenance. I know that some shops, they have it. Mm-hmm. I know how they do it, but I cannot do it because I'm not selling the, the equipment, neither the fish, neither the aquarium or the system. So if you sell like a car, a full car with the full extras, you can provide two years warranty, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, if I sell you a car or you cannot ask to go, but I, I can explain it a different way. So you, you have a Mercedes, so you buy a Mercedes, a very expensive one, right? And um, of course, they give you two years warranty, but you cannot go to BMW asking for free assistance, right? So yep. what they are expecting here. If a shop sell a full system with all the plants, equipment, they already have enough turnover. They can get it free. It's a few maintenance to the customers. But they cannot ask them to escape and sell everything and come to me and ask, can you do the maintenance for me? Of course I can, but you need to pay it. It's not free. So yeah, sure. they already paid a lot of money for that before. So they don't want to pay it again. So, oh, I see. So, and this is why it's very difficult to manage here the things in that way. So since we have so many shops around, it's not a huge country. Uh, country. Mm-hmm. So... Somehow, the shops that they usually customers visit, uh, they can either offer the installation or the, the, the layout and everything based in what they bought. But of course, they come to me. So now I have all the aquarium, the lights, all system, everything. Can you escape it for me? Of course I can, but you need to pay it. It's not free. So <laughs> what do you expect? You didn't buy, didn't bought that from me. So. What do you expect for free? No, it's not possible. So this is, is turning a little bit difficult to do it over here. And um, luckily, I am working for Aquaphor and also doing a different job. That is also good because if we don't have some aquascaping, but we still need the design, we still need social media, we still need to make the photography. And um, that is kind of a job that somehow evolves uh, different areas. Of course, mm-hmm. give me uh, more work. And anytime I go to Aquaphor, I need to try to take the most time I can inside of the gallery, greenhouse or warehouse, just to take the pictures I need, bring them back. And then I need to wear them here uh, and then send it back for portfolio or for labels. Um, so if people are thinking that I'm traveling to the Netherlands just for, for vacations, visit SS Garden and having fun, so they don't know, not even a bit. And right. You start and you work seven by seven, so you work all days and take the most you can yeah. uh, of uh, the time there. And then, of course, uh, at a certain point, when you reach the evening, seven or eight, you are already so tired. You just want to sleep a little bit because you spent all day working. Right. And uh, no matter if you really love it, but uh, everything that you still love it, you feel it on your body because it's impossible. Can we imagine 15 months without traveling there? The tanks, they were okay, but uh, not in the standards that I want. Mm-hmm. Um, because the quality of aquascaping is always relied on the standards. Mm-hmm. You can look to a tank and say, wow, this is super. For me, this is low. So to be super, we need to get uh, the, the levels really, really high. And most of the tanks, when you scape it, they will look immediately nice, mm-hmm. but the maintenance, the trimming, how you take care of the tank uh, in a few months advance will be a game changer. And you need to keep the identity. You need to understand how that must grow to fill Mm -hmm. space. It's more difficult to take care of someone else's tank than your own tank. Exactly. Of course, every aquascaper, me, you, Everybody else, when they look to something, we have different opinions about and deep opinions and tastes. You like the things a little bit more or less. You like more green or more red. You don't like this plant. You like more the other. But 
if someone else did a tank, you need to look to it and need to understand. Well, probably it's not my favorite, but I need to respect what was done here. So mm -hmm. let's try to fix it and get it in another level how much I can. And this is the thing, the way how you trim, you don't trim in bumps, you trim straightforward. Uh, the way how you clean, you need to clean all tank, not 80%. You need to clean it. When you look to it, it needs to shine. If you dirty, you have the, some plants on the floor, you have the cabinet that is dirty, no matter how you find it, you need to clean. So when you start doing a job, no matter how you find it, you need to make it perfect. Of course, those kind of things, they need to be paid. Because imagine, you hire me to go to your house and make a hell of a mess. I left all rocks, plants, all shit everywhere. In the end, I will ask you for money to put just a few rocks and wood inside of your tank. That is not right. So right. you start, you prepare everything, the installation, you prepare the artscape. Then when is everything finished, you clean everything, you wipe the floor, and then now it's done. So all those things, the way how you trim, the way how you start, the way how you finish. This is show me your tank and I will tell you how is your maintenance. This is always like that. Mm -hmm. So you need to be precise and sharp. And um, it's not be having OCD. It's you just need to make it perfect. You, you need to always raise your standards. And this is, um, I, I always say that um, to get someone in life, we need to work so hard. Mm -hmm. But to go down in life, you just need a bad job. Mm -hmm. so yeah. If you don't keep the standards, if you don't do it or give 120% of you in everything you do, uh, so probably you are in the wrong business. So just do it and give the best you can. Even if it's probably not 100% mm -hmm. that what the customer expected, but this is a personal taste. But in the end, you gave 150% of you or probably even more. So sure. standards is something that will define who you are. How you clean, I, how you... I agree 100%. And it, it makes a difference. And I'm not saying that we have um, four or five persons uh, taking care of the gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, they work three new ones now, two old ones. And um, one of them, Romy, there's so, uh, a few years of experience. But one thing is obvious. Another thing is professional. When you are an obvious, it is allowed that you made those mistakes. When you are a professional, you cannot take those mistakes. So you need to step up the game. You need to show everybody who you are. So you need to wipe. You need to clean. You need no excuse. You need to do it. So this is what will make the difference after all in the end, the way how you trim. <clears throat> the way you clean just that because cleaning a tank or skipping a tank there is a lot of people doing it the way yeah. how you do it, this will have to establish the difference for sure hey so i noticed that we have a minute left uh i guess like there's an hour limit on, no i think uh, the stream. they change uh, no no th there is there is like it's telling me that there's really? only a minute yeah so uh, can we take a quick look at your tank at home? I cannot. The light is not all <laughs> light on again. <laughs> the light's off. Yeah, right. gotcha. Power cut. Look, there is nothing. That I still have no light. <laughs> you know. So you see the wabi is there. Or look, this is the terrarium, the tiny one. Look, I don't yeah. have light. Uh, <laughs> so Got I am uh, using my data because since uh, that time that uh, the connection oh was, yeah for the uh, with the blackout okay Got i don't it. have that so well okay then we have a couple of seconds left uh, left i just wanted to say thank you so much 
for thank you, you know, so much, having Mark. a great chat with me. And uh, we'll do this again uh, very uh, soon. Hopefully okay? in Aquaflora. So I can show you. Yeah. A